So my name's Tim Silverwood and I call myself an environmentalist. I am um, from Sydney region in, in the east coast of Australia and um, my environmental calling is raising awareness of the consequences of plastic pollution, otherwise known as marine debris. There's a couple of kind of key turning points, the first of which is just, I guess, developing a love affair with the ocean via being a surfer. So from a very young age, I was thrust into the ocean where I'd spend hours and hours each day, um, obviously getting satisfaction out of the sport, but what it really became for me was almost like my temple and it was my playground. So as I got a little bit older, I'd noticed there'd be bits of plastic floating in that playground so I'd naturally want to kind of keep it clean and protect it and so I did that but then after going to university and studying conservation studies and science learning more about the impact of this plastic pollution once it gets in there it lasts for a really long time so that made me more um, more empowered to do something about it but it wasn't really until I in 2007 um, did a big backpacking adventure starting in Indonesia and working my way through all the way to the top of India overland and just seeing what was happening in, the, in respect to the issue of plastic getting into the ocean in countries like Indonesia and India and I was like wow this is actually a much bigger problem than I could ever have imagined and that really spurred me on to come back to Australia and and, and do my bit, which for me was, um, was forming an organisation. So in 2009, I um, established an initiative called Take Three. It was our way of empowering every person to take a little bit of responsibility by just taking three pieces of plastic with them when they leave the beach or waterway or in fact anywhere, because you know, every river leads to the sea and the, the ocean's at the bottom of every hill. So if we can get people to kind of take that giant leap of just picking up a bit of trash, then we can, realistically prevent more that waste getting there in the first place. I think that we're, um, we're kind of middle ground, you know, like I think that there's definitely people who are doing a better job than us, but there's also a great deal of people who are doing uh, a lot worse than us. Um, I think we do get a little bit complacent because we're down here at the bottom of the, uh, of the planet and we do have really, really pristine beaches by a global standard, but we still um, have huge problems. I mean, if you just take this issue in particular, the issue of plastic pollution, we're not immune from it at all. And a great deal of the, um, the plastic end up in the ocean is coming from, from Australia. Uh, one recent situation which kind of highlighted that for me was the impact of a bird population over on Lord Howe Island, which is about 500 kilometres off the coast of, of Sydney. And uh, we're seeing now that there's a population of the flesh-footed shearwater over there, which uh, may be one of the worst affected species in the world for ingesting uh, plastic that's floating on the surface of the ocean. And they're feeding in the Tasman Sea, which means it's pretty easy to um, correlate that that plastic that they're ingesting is coming from Australia. So it's, um, it's happening in our own backyard. So we've got to um, you know, set, set an example and, and, and take charge in this issue and make some real changes to make sure that this plastic doesn't get into the ocean environment. Ever since kind of being to learning about this, uh, the issue of plastic pollution, one of the most and the highly exposed um, occurrences is this phenomenon called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is a region in the North Pacific Ocean where due to the, the formation of, of currents, they come together and basically create this huge swirling vortex, um, which is called a gyre. Now, a gyre is, is, naturally, is a naturally occurring feature of the oceans. Wherever you go, you'll have currents that converge and they end up forming these large areas. And there's actually five of these oceanic gyres, the large ones in the world. It's in the North Pacific, there's also one in the South Pacific, North Atlantic, South Atlantic, and also in the Indian Ocean. So they're a naturally occurring um, uh, feature, but what's unnatural is the fact that they're carrying huge, huge quantities of plastic in them. So for all eternity, we would have had uh, you know, coconuts and seed pods and, and bits of driftwood floating around these things. But now, because we just use so much plastic and we, we can't by any means guarantee that what we use doesn't get back out into the environment, they're choking with plastic. So the media has loved to kind of jump on board with this. It was only really discovered the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in 1997. So there was this image that was conducted, um, that was conceived by the, the media of this floating island of trash the size of Texas, which is completely false. That's not the case at all. I've just returned from an expedition there and it's very different to that. What we prefer to call it, those of us who work in the field, is it's more like a giant plastic soup. And one of the main reasons for that is uh, plastic doesn't actually maintain its structure uh, for very long when it is in the ocean environment because you've got 
all the, uh, the sun's radiation beating down upon it. You've got this, this disturbance from the, the motion of the ocean. So a lot of it actually breaks apart into smaller and smaller pieces, but it doesn't actually biodegrade. So it's still there in some way or form, but generally it gets into these small pieces. So what we find is it's not just floating on the ocean surface, it's right throughout the water column over a very, very large area. So when I learnt of an expedition that was happening to go out to see this Great Pacific Garbage Patch for myself in, uh, in February this year, I decided it was going to be, I was going to be on that boat. There was no two ways about it. Um, just to be able to see it for myself, but also to go out there with my own video equipment and photography and actually just tell it like it is. Because for me, there's no real need to blow it out of proportion. The fact that there is no floating island of trash is not by any means saying it's not uh, a huge problem, it's actually worse because if it was a floating island we might be able to get out there and clean it up, we might be able to go out there and scoop it up, but we can't because all it is is this huge vast area of all sorts of um, bits of plastic floating around and it's really quite frightening. So I think one of the, um, the main concerns with the issue surrounding plastic pollution is that it's still not common knowledge. Um, so I've had the opportunity to be uh, touring around with this film called Bag It, which is a US produced film, which kind of takes a look at the, uh, the, the bigger picture of plastics, you know, the, the evolution of how it came into our lives, but then how it manifested into this situation where we can't live a day in our lives without interacting with plastic. And it takes a particular um, close look at the, the evolution of single-use disposable plastic items ones that we didn't have until recently, but just, you know, the, the coffee cup, the plastic water bottle, all these beverage containers, plastic cutlery, it's just everywhere around us is this stuff that we use for a fraction of time and then we throw it away. So the Bagot film is, um, is, is fantastic for bringing to the everyday person this issue of plastics, how it affects us, how it affects the environment, how it affects the health of, um, of not just us, but future generations. So it's a really, really good um, example of what documentary film can bring to, the, um, to an issue like this. So um, it's inspired me also though to look at uh, making something si similar in an Australian context. So I'm currently gathering content for a um, bit more of a regional, regionally specific documentary about plastic, which will incorporate my own experiences and just telling the story of the people around Australia who, um, who are recognising that our management of this resource is a little bit flawed because if the fact that it is getting into the environment, the fact that we're using more than we ever have before and we can't, we can't seem to stop it, um, you know, escaping our clutches and getting the environment, that, that something is flawed. And I realised that when I was out there on that boat in the middle of the ocean, 2,000 kilometres from the nearest landmass, and you look overboard and you see plastic, you're like, this is not right, like something's gone wrong in the chain because it's, um, it's incredible the impact it is having on, on wildlife and, uh, and ultimately on us because we rely on the oceans for survival. We rely on the ocean for so much of, of, um, of, uh, of our necessities. So I get asked the, the question a lot about what can we do to, 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 to kind of solve this problem and it's very clear that to solve this is, is a monumental task but I think there's a few things we can do. Um, the first thing I think is just to to rethink our relationship with plastic and now it's not about hating plastic it's about valuing plastic more because it's it's at its present state it's derived from from fossil fuels which take up to 70 million years to create and it goes through this incredible process to make it into the plastic items that we use yet we just throw them away so i think it's about putting a a value on that and saying well okay yes um you know, reducing is important and reusing is important and yes, recycling is important, but it's about just saying like, it's currently a little bit flawed. Um, recycling, for example, like recycling, the idea of it is great. The idea that you use an item and then you put it in a little bin and it goes away and it gets reproduced and it comes back as that new item. If we can make that work on a large level, then fantastic, but we currently can't. Too many things are made from non-recyclable substances. Too many um, are not, uh, you know, they're not in a closed loop. If it gets recycled, it generally gets downcycled into something else there as well. So I think it's really important that um, we take a, a big look at the, at the picture and make some changes there. In terms of everyday life, I really think people should start to look more at reusable alternatives, um, things like your, um, reusable water bottles, re reusable shopping bags, reusable coffee cups, reusable cutlery. 
Like we don't need, we, th we feel like we need to have all these items that there's no other way, but there is another way because my parents and my grandparents didn't have these um, disposable items and they seem to, to manage okay, but we've got it a little bit skewed. And, um, and getting out and cleaning up your, your world a little bit, you know, that's one thing that we can definitely do. Um, getting out and participating in a beach cleanup. If you see a bit of trash on the ground and you're walking along, you've got the ability to pick it up. You know, you didn't put it there, but it's so simple and it's really empowering. It makes you feel great to just kind of pick it up and put it in a place where it was meant to be. And um, I just think it's about understanding that we all have a, a role to play in, in solving this issue. It's going to take time, but we can, we can get there if we all kind of come together and yeah, work towards the same goal.